make a few jars of this amazing mango chutney and you can whip up any of these delicious meals in a snap. To a heavy stock pot, you are gonna add your mango. You can use fresh or frozen, either works. Then you are going to add some raisins, onions, bell pepper, and this is gonna give a nice flavor to this chutney. Now I have some organic cane sugar and some freshly grated ginger. Very important that you use fresh. A little cracked red pepper for some heat and salt to kind of bring it all together. And finally, some apple cider vinegar. Go ahead and give that a stir and then you are gonna put the heat on the burner up to about medium high and you are going to let this simmer. It's going to take about 20 minutes and you'll want to stir it pretty constantly because you don't want it to burn on the bottom and you don't want this mixture to bubble over the pot as well. So when it starts to look like this and it's nice and thick, you're gonna to wanna to test to see if it's done. Now I put a plate in the freezer while I was cooking this, and then you just take that out and scoop a little bit onto the plate. And then after that, you put it in this back in the freezer and you let it sit there for two minutes. Once that two minutes is up, run your finger right through the, the chutney. And do you see how it stays separated? It doesn't run back together. That's the sign it's done. Now the chutney's done, you have two options. You can ladle this into a container and keep it in your fridge for up to four weeks, or you can water bath can it. So while the chutney's cooking, just put a large pot of water with enough water in it that it's gonna cover your jars by two inches and put a tray on the bottom to keep the jars elevated. Ladle the chutney into a jar and use a debubbler to remove the bubbles from the jar. Measure the headspace, making sure there's one quarter inch between the top of the chutney and the top of the rim. Then use a wet napkin to wipe off any residue that is on the rim, center a lid, and then screw a ring on fingertip tight. Place the chutney into the water bath canner and allow it to process for the correct amount of time. Once the time is up, remove the jars from the water bath canner, allow them to sit for 12 to 24 hours undisturbed, remove the rings, check the seals, label them, and put them in your pantry. Now that you have your mango chutney made, let me show you three different quick and easy recipes that you can use it in. I've got some chicken, I've got some cranberries, some sliced almonds, and some green onions that I'm just gonna chunk in this bowl. And then I'm gonna just use this bowl so I don't have to dirty up another one. I've got a recipe, my mayonnaise recipe. It makes three quarters of a cup. And so that is what I'm using there. I've got some curry powder, and of course, a tad of that delicious mango chutney. Stir this up. Sorry about that noise, let's switch over. And then we are gonna dump it right into this bowl. And give it a good stir. This curry along with the mango chutney, oh, it is just a flavor bomb. Oops, I got a big old mess. All right, so I'm gonna go put this in the fridge cover to chill and we'll enjoy it when we get back. I like to eat this in some lettuce wraps. You can put it on bread. Really, the possibilities are endless, but this makes a nice little, little wrap here. And that's it. Doesn't that look good? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. 
melt some butter in a skillet and then go ahead and put some salt and some pepper onto your salmon fillets. And then you're gonna wanna lay those into the skillet with the skin side up. And we're going to get a nice sear on the top of the salmon and it's gonna be all nice and brown. So just let those sizzle and kind of, you know, cook for a few minutes. And while that's cooking, take some of the mango chutney and you're gonna thin it down with just a little bit of water. And then you're gonna add some soy sauce or coconut aminos and stir that up really good. Now, at this point, take those salmon fillets out of the pan and we are going to take that chutney mixture and we're gonna pour it into the pan and then we're gonna let it combine with the butter. And this is what we're going to finish cooking the salmon fillets in. So just put them back in, skin side down, and let this cook. You're gonna want to baste the top with this uh, mango chutney glaze as it's cooking. Do that a few times. And then right before you, before it's ready, just go ahead and pop it under a broiler. And that way that top just kind of caramelizes with the sugars from the chutney. And oh, look at this, you guys, this mango glazed salmon is amazing with a side of broccoli and some rice. In a bowl, you want to put a pound of ground turkey meat with some diced green onions, some chopped fresh cilantro. You also want a little bit of salt, a little bit of cracked pepper, and the zest of half of a lime. And of course, you want to add your amazing mango chutney. Use your hands, mix this up really, really well, and then divide it into four equal portions and shape your turkey burgers. Once you have them all shaped, you want to go ahead and put them on a plate and then pop these in the fridge until you are ready to cook. Once you're ready, heat a grill pan over medium heat with some oil and then cook your turkey burgers on the first side for about eight minutes. After they've cooked for eight minutes, flip them over and then use your spatula to kind of press them down a little bit. Continue to cook for eight more minutes or until the internal temperature registers 165. Top them with some goat cheese and a little bit more mango and you've got a delicious dinner. Like what you see? Make sure you tune in next week and I'll show you more ways than one to use a jar of cherry jam.